Coming up on All About Android, we go hands-on with the FX Tech Pro 1. Also, we have the OnePlus 7 Pro Mini review, uh, the Pixel 3a preview, our favorite things from Google I.O., your emails, apps, and a whole lot more. All About Android is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by LegalZoom. Check out LegalZoom today to see how they can make life better for you and your business. Visit LegalZoom.com and enter AAA at checkout for special savings. And by IT Pro TV, providing effective training with access to virtual labs and practice tests. Visit go.itpro.tv slash allaboutandroid. You can take advantage of their lowest prices of the season. And for additional 30% off the lifetime of your active subscription, use code AAA30 at checkout. And by ExpressVPN, protect your online privacy with one click. Yes, it's that easy. For three extra months free with a one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash allaboutandroid. Hello and welcome to All About Android, episode 420. Uh, recorded on Tuesday, May 14th, 2019. Your weekly source of latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. It's a good thing we're an evening show. I'm Jason Howell. Not making the joke. I'm Ron Richards. Come on. Go there, Ron. Nope. Okay. What's up, guys? <laughs> Flo here. How you doing? Flo, Flo, come back down to Flo Earth. Flo will. That's more yes. of Flo's alley. <laughs> all right, all right. I knew one of you would take the bait. How's it I going, guys? I <laughs> it's good to have you here, Ron. It's good to see you. I'm sorry that we missed you at Google I.O. last week. I missed Google I.O. so much. I was there at my computer up against the glass wishing I was oh, there. But you know, it's okay. I'm used next to it year. Now. Next year. Yeah. It'll totally yeah. happen next year. Uh, joining us today uh, to the show, Adrian Limao Ching, who is the co founder of FX Tech, which. For those of you who have been watching this show uh, right around Mobile World Congress, I think that was like kind of like the big that was a, that, that was, was the launch. big reveal that of the, the Pro reveal, One, the reveal of the Pro One, the reveal of our brand. Right on! Yeah, thanks for having me. It's Absolutely, it's great to get you here, and I love being able to you know get guests in the studio, especially when you're bringing cool hardware to show off. Thank you. This is going to end up being a hardware heavy show because this exactly. is a hardware heavy week, and and the uh, FX. Pro One, the FX Tech Pro One is part of that. So great, uh, this. yeah, it's good to have you here. Where are you here from? Like, where where do you live? We're London based, London based, UK London. Right on. So, you came all the way to San Francisco Bay Area for all about Android. Five thousand miles for London. Uh, Android. <laughs> <laughs> We've got pull, you guys. Awesome. <laughs> I'm sure you're here for other things though. But it's awesome to have you here. If you have another show, another guest who comes on the show who comes from further, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> well. Let me see here. Um, Mateo, Mateo is technically farther, right? In Edinburgh? Yeah, he comes from Edinburgh. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. As, I don't a, know. as crow flies. And yeah, sometimes we have right. Australians on the show. We'd have to crunch some numbers in order to figure yeah, that out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to do a round trip next time. I'm going to go to like Paris first and then come back. All right. Hey, I would be. we would love to have you back and we'd be super impressed if you did that. Uh, so Adrian's going to join us for the entire show. We are going to talk, of course, uh, about the awesome phone that he has in front of him. We're also going to talk about a whole bunch of other stuff, and we like to start things off with the news, Victor. No half-baked puff pieces here. Take a hit on Android News. Oh, man. You really wow. Wow. Yes, Victor. Yes, yes, yes. You really went Victor, there. Victor prepared. I know. That was awesome. Complete with like a, a smoky uh, intro video that yes. only, only video listeners could see that. Yeah. Um. Now, now we know a little something about Victor, don't we? We know Listen, a little something about Victor. Okay. Over the, yeah, that's true. We live in California. Big, big surprise. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so instead of like rounding up like new news, we realized, and we usually do this after Google I/O because for whatever reason, Google does not send Ron an invite uh, to Google I/O. We got to figure out some way around that, uh, but. Flo and I are at Google I.O. We're always having a lot of fun there and we learn a lot of things and everything. We get to share our opinions and experiences and all that. Ron, you, nev you never get that chance because you're not there during Google I.O. week. So we thought we'd start this show off kind of talking about some of our favorite things from Google I.O. Since, since it's now in the rearview mirror 
Uh, the dust has settled. The smoke well, has poured. Uh, the, uh, the smoke is back, apparently. The smoke is back. Um, <laughs> but so, so b before we get into like you know specific things from Google I/O for you guys who were there, what was the vibe like? Was it energetic? Was it laid back? Was it like you know? Because I, I definitely interpreted this year's Google I/O a certain way, but I don't want to reveal that till I hear what the vibe was like from you guys. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, Flo? I, I felt like it was it was a little bit mellower. I mean, it, yeah. yeah. It I, I use the word tame. tepid to describe tepid. it to several folks. Tepid, tepid is yeah, not a positive I know, word. I, I know that's a really extreme word, but it just, um, even like the way the keynote ended and it just, but it wasn't like tepid in a bad way. It was just, it felt like everybody was there to, to get something done. Everybody was there for the next, for the next thing, like just to you know, roll with it. It's really, it's really really. It's really funny that you say that because while I didn't go to Google I.O., I was here in New York City and I did go to YouTube Brandcast, which mm, is like mm. which is like YouTube's keynote and all that sort of stuff during the upfronts that happened here in New York around advertising. And they did this whole presentation at Radio City Music Hall and they had Shakira was there and Tiffany Haddish oh. and like and like all these YouTubers who I, I don't know who they are. I mean, I know who they are, but I don't <laughs> care. Um, and, you know, and it was it was a great like hour and 15 minute show. And then they had some YouTuber musician perform some woman i forget her name and uh and then like the house lights came up and then a voice a, a voice of god came in and they're like the presentation is now over goodbye and like there Please was leave. no ending there was no wrap up it was just like oh it was very abrupt and it felt like they were just moving on to the next thing which is weird hmm. so maybe that's a google thing who knows could be yeah sometimes uh sometimes you, you never quite know what <laughs> what you're in store for uh although i i feel like we we attribute that more to samsung than google uh usually with as far yeah. as their live events are concerned yeah i don't like i think Flo, I, I would agree like from a journalist at visiting io perspective like being in the kind of the press area kind of getting the vibe the energy from there it really kind of seemed like everybody was like yeah yeah that was that was neat. There was some cool stuff. It was really mellow. It was really calm. There was no, there was no skydiving. There were, you know what I mean? There were none of these like crazy, uh, crazy stunts, stunts of yeah. any sort. Um, even the experiments. But there was cool stuff there. You know? Well, the, I was yeah, there, say, there was, the ex yeah, the experiments. Yeah. Right. Flow, go. Cause that's I was totally just going to say the experiments were a little subdued this year. Yeah. I just, they were like, they were cool, but it wasn't, um, I just didn't feel like it was as wow ish as it has been kind of the last couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. Adrian, so, have you ever, have you ever made your way out to a Google IO event? Or? I haven't. No. Yeah. It's, it's a long way to go. Yeah. It's well, that's, that's me. true. Yeah. But I mean, people, people travel to this thing from everywhere. Like there's people from all over the world attending Google IO, obviously more, more on like the developer side, sure. uh, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. You, you just check it out one of these I'll days. check it out. <laughs> well, so, the, so the experience from sitting at home or sitting at work while it was going on was that it really, like, uh, to be honest, I missed a large portion of the keynote because I had a meeting and I got back. I'm like, what did I miss? And I didn't miss a lot. You know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. it just it just seemed very kind of. It wasn't, you know, like, of course, all, 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 you know, all the folks like you guys and our other friends of the show who were at Google I.O. were tweeting about it, but like nobody else was like, we already knew about the Pixel 3a. So that wasn't mm -hmm. even like a big deal. Mm -hmm. Nothing, you know, nothing. And, and again, and I feel like we've said this in the past Google I.O.'s, you know, there was a bunch of little things that are worth getting excited about from a developer standpoint, but nothing, no game changer, no, like, this is the new world of Android. This, it continues to iterate and evolve. Um, and that probably, Jason, should we dive into our yeah, favorite things? Yeah, let's do yeah. it. Yeah. Well, that, and that's a that's a good uh, segue into my first favorite thing from Google I.O., which was just, again, the emphasis and the evolution of Google Assistant. Um, you know, I, I think now it's, this is like three years running where, where we're like, wow, Google Assistant really dominated a lot of the presentation. And Google Assistant really is becoming, is the backbone of everything that your Android phone can do. And they announced a whole bunch of stuff. But some of the highlights that was interesting was that Google Assistant is now going to be 10 times faster. And I know often we throw around like those 10x and 5x kind of things. But in the demo, it looked, I mean, it was noticeably faster. Um, in terms of its response and how it worked with you. Um, they introducing a driving mode, which is much needed. Um, uh, the uh, uh, duplex rolling out to the web, which is uh, super interesting, of course. Um, on the spot translation, um, app actions and built in intents into apps. It just it just, just seems like they're taking assistant and, and diving it deeper and deeper into the whole ecosystem. And it just shows how important assistant is becoming and how powerful it can be. So that got me pretty excited. 
Yeah, that demo, the stage demo was really impressive watching assistant, you know, watching the, 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 there was a woman on stage with the phone and just, I mean, flying through these voice commands, controlling every aspect of her phone, writing emails and not even saying period at the end of a sentence. The period just drops in there when she puts in like a second pause, all these things. Um, magic. I know it's, it's, it's straight up magic. It's straight up tech magic. Um, uh, so I, I guess we'll see if that's like the next, the next phase. Like my, my prediction is that the four is going to be all about this stuff, you know, moving more and more on the device. And actually I'll, I'll, uh, talk about that when uh, we get to me, but, um, but Google assistant, that was awesome. Flo, what was, what was one of your favorite things? Uh, okay. Well, to do a little bit of my own service here <laughs> uh, was, was one of your favorite things yourself yes <laughs> uh, i okay we we did so jason and i got to talk to a lot of people this week i got to talk to hiroshi uh, on stage was which was pretty exciting um we talked a lot about just his vision for android and the platforms we talked a little bit about fuchsia kind of like snuck in a little question there um but overall like just the general sentiment of the whole show was these this is these are the little things that are going to make Android better overall. And so now I'm just trying to think about how to best distill it down to explain it to everybody. So that's kind of like that's where I'm at. Like I got really excited about all these little changes coming, you know, especially in Android Q. Um, I I also was really interested in the Nest news because that definitely unseated some folks. It was kind of the silent little silent little news tidbit that came out of the keynote, which was that a lot of things are going to be changing with Nest. A lot of those things are kind of still up in the air. So I'm kind of chasing that. But I mean, overall, it was just. Well, can I, can I ask you the most important question about the Hiroshi yes. conversation? Yes. Um, did he ask about me? No. Does he does he know I exist? <laughs> was he wondering where I was? He was like, oh, hey, where's Ron? No. Oh, oh well. No. Yeah, that, no. no that, that didn't seem to come up on stage. No, Ron. Um, I'm bad about that. Um. <laughs> Not this time, anyways. Next no, time. No, but I, no, but I, I watched some of the some of your talk flow, and that was awesome. And it was great to see you kind of in the spotlight doing that and talking to one, you know, friend of the show, Hiroshi. Uh, that that that's uh, quite the accomplishment. That's awesome. Did Morrissey awesome. ask about me? Uh, surprisingly, <laughs> he did. Are you a Morrissey fan? I'm not a Morrissey fan. Are you a 90210 fan? I'd have to go back some years. I did watch. Okay, all right. Okay, all, all right. right. So you okay got some points with these two yeah. then. If you <laughs> if if you were 90210 and Morrissey, Ron and you would be best friends right now. Uh, yeah. But 90210 <laughs> connects you with them uh, pretty seriously. So this is good. This is good. I can make a link between uh, Hiroshi and 90210. So when I was in Japan a few years ago, in a hotel, turning on the TV, trying to search for something in English, and I came across 90210 in Japanese, and Ooh. it was the most bizarre thing I've seen. Uh, it, was, it, it, got, it got me. I watched a whole episode in Japanese. I've probably seen it before, and I watched the whole thing in Japanese. And then seeing uh, Brendan and uh, Sharon, it was brilliant. <laughs> It's awesome. That is awesome. Uh, it's good in Romanian too, by the way. But anyway, <laughs> 902 and O is good in any language. Okay. <laughs> uh, I expect that to come out of one of your mouths, not mine. Uh, I think one of the things that I'm most excited about from IO, and we definitely talked uh, to Steph Cuthbertson and Chet mm -hmm. Haas about this on last week's episode, was Project Mainline. And uh, I don't know, at this point, I feel like a broken record because I think I've talked about it a lot. Uh, but I'm really positive. I feel very positively about kind of what this means for security updates for Android. It's a furthering of Project Tango, uh, which was kind of like componentizing the Android OS. Project Mainline. Trouble. Is, or sorry, I, I, I did that on Sunday it's okay, too. It's okay. It's okay. I keep doing that. <laughs> It's okay. They both start with T. Jeez. Yes, it's, it's the Axel Foley, Axel Rose thing all over again, but on a different <laughs> show, a different episode. Uh, pro, uh, so, yes, Project Treble is the componentizing of the Android OS. Project Mainline is kind of takes it a step further, and these little pieces of the Android OS that can be updated from Google at their whim if there's a security issue. And I just 
like this is what Android needs. In my opinion, that's what Android needs. We need to figure out how to how to kind of get around the stumbling blo blocks, you know, the the speed bumps that hold up these updates. And of course, actually, I'm curious because you you are you are in effect a, a device maker. You are an OEM. We are. Uh, so, like, what do you what is your perspective on something like Project Mainline that I mean, really has the potential to kind of go around you, so to speak, but for the greater good of, of the users and from yeah, a security yeah. perspective. From, from our perspective, anything that helps our users get the updates quicker is great for us. You know, yeah. we're, we're, a, we're, a, we're, a growing, we're a growing brand, we're a growing startup. You know, we can push updates out as quickly as we can, but if there's something that can get to the users quicker than what we can do, um, and it's backed by Google, then great. Yeah. Does, does it concern you at all that Google's kind of baking in these ways to have direct access to the Android uh, installation that's on one of your devices? So if they get something wrong on uh, their end, well, uh, users might hold you accountable for well, that? For us, we're stock. We're stock Android. Okay. So, you know, we work with our manufacturing teams. We, you know, we rely on what they get and what Google send out. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we, we like to think that we put our faith in Google. Um, yeah. And uh, that's how it should be going forward. We all put our faith in Google, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> for, for better or for worse. Uh, so that was what that excellent. Thank you, by the way. Um, but that was one of my favorite things. Ron, what's your second? Well, my second uh, was uh, I made the prediction before Google I.O. that podcasts were going to be at Google I.O. in a big way. Uh, I was wrong. But I was. But you weren't happy. totally wrong. Yeah, well, you weren't totally, totally wrong. wrong. Maybe it, big it, it, way was wrong, but yes, it, it, it came out in a in a small way. It got mentioned, yeah. uh, but basically, in some of the updates to Google Search, they announced that it's gonna um, they are gonna be rolling out podcast search uh, in Google Search uh, natively, so that if you are you know are using Google and and search for something, it will crawl podcast episodes and give you results from within podcasts, which could be really great for podcast discovery. Um, not the total all in you know destroy Spotify and Apple uh, around podcasts that I thought they were going to do, but it's something, it's progress, and it shows they didn't forget podcast exists. So Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you go to Google search right now and you just do a search for All About Android, the first result that comes up is from our website, All About Android on twit.tv, uh, and then it has recent episodes, and the three last episodes are embedded in the search results, complete with the play button, uh, TR, you know, total runtime, when it was posted, name, title, all that kind of stuff, and that seems to be the beginning. Like, that's nice to have that embedded in there and have that result come you know be be presented in such an easy to uh click way at some point they're going to get you know into the 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 direction of pulling out content from within and making that searchable that's going to be a really big game changer as far as i'm concerned yeah. so yeah that looks good I like that in the search results. I, I just, I just nice. want them to go bigger with it. That's my one complaint. I just want a big Google-based podcast initiative. Yeah. So. Well, uh, Google, <laughs> Google may let you down. I know. They always, <laughs> they always they do. They might not get do that, but it's looking. Can good. I add to this as yeah, my uh, of sort of second pick? Yes. Um, I would like to add live caption since that's effectively a part of this podcast indexing thing. As, as, Flo, as Flo doesn't look at the document <laughs> and steals like, my, thir my, thir my third one was live captions. So. Oh, sorry, Ron. That's okay, that's okay. I, yeah, you I guys can really take it away, Flo. I was Flo. trying not to impede in your territory, and look what I did. <laughs> that's all right. You could, you, Ron, why don't you lead off with why, it? Yeah, why don't you, why do you both love they that? They announced live captions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, what? <laughs> <laughs> I just think as someone who's worked in video and has worked in captioning for 10 plus years, you know, I know how a uh, incredibly important it is for accessibility and b how complicated and complex it can be. So if anybody can figure it out, it's Google to do live on the fly uh, transcription. Uh, it's it, we talked, you know, we talked about assistant being magic. This is actually magic because yeah. the human language is incredibly difficult. And on and you know, if going back ten years ago told me that somebody could do on the fly live video transcription, uh, you know, as you see here in the demo, actually happening as someone saying it, I wouldn't believe it. Uh, but here we are. So it's magic. And it, this can help uh, a, a huge number of users who can't hear, and that's that's so critical. So uh, I, I love that they, they that they kind of focused on this and made this a little bit of magic happen. It'll work for audio too, so that's kind of yeah. like how we can sort of relate it to the last little point. Um, just imagine 
being able to hear a pod, being able to really understand what it is that I am saying on this podcast once and for all. Just imagine people. Um, I think, you know, I think that's a really good point that you, that you bring up audio because as, as a, as an accessibility feature, like that is really amazing. Like, could you imagine not being able, like not being able to hear. To participate in podcasts. Not be able to participate in podcasts, which are so yeah. big right now. Audio podcasts especially. Which are our main medium of the media now. Like everybody has, I mean, all the big media companies have podcast arms. Right. We have a podcast. Yeah. It's, big surprise. We have a podcast. Um, <laughs> but I mean, this opens the door for anyone mm -hmm. who, is, you know, can't, has a hearing disability to be able to actually follow along and participate in the podcast realm. Yeah, great, great. Yeah. Uh, and also, I think, also the Google Lens announcements where they're mm -hmm. doing the updates to Google Lens and, you know, they're, they're getting more contextual information from, mm -hmm. from the screens. Again, it will help accessibility. Those that have sight problems, they'll then be able to get some audio and figure out what's going on, translation as well. Yeah. I think it really helps. So I think good on to Google. Good on Google for doing this. Yeah, because I feel like for, for such a long time, Google has had accessibility features, but they've been behind what the iPhone has been able to do. The iPhone has you know long been considered like the phone. If, if you're looking for accessibility features, Apple's put some really, really great thought into mm -hmm. how they integrate that into the phone. And I don't know if these features change that necessarily as far as like a, a blanket recommendation ios versus android for accessibility but these features are pretty awesome so i don't know if all you know this this erases kind of the um the the aspects of accessibility on android that aren't as ideal but it definitely kind of fills in some gaps yeah agreed yeah really cool what Anything from the from IO because I realized I skipped you on the on the way around and I apologize about that. Was uh, there anything that really stood out to you that, that you were kind of excited about? Uh, I'd I'd love hearing more about um, Android Q, um, mm. the dark mode features, the gesture controls, um, mm. and actually the uh, I remember what it's called the um, smart locking where you can actually shut down and switch off from your phone for certain apps at certain times. That to me is really was really important because mm. we're all on our phones so much and we all need to do a better job of switching off from it, but there are certain times when you need your phone there. Yeah, I, I'm in this scenario sometimes where I throw my phone across the room because I kind of had enough at the end of the day. Yeah, I want to spend time <laughs> with the wife and with the kids and same. I throw the phone across the room. But at the same time, I know that I need to be on the phone. So it's nice to turn off certain apps. I, I really like that feature and I'm looking forward to using it when it comes out. Digital well-being, do you use that that's on your phone? It kind of, yeah, those controls yeah, and everything? That's the one. Um, and soon, focus mode. Let's see here. I'm trying to... So I have Android Q Beta 3, by the way. I have it installed on the Pixel 3 XL. One of four phones I have out in front of me right now. Um, and you might notice, because uh, you mentioned gestures, I don't know if anyone's kind of... Well, we haven't shown off the new gesture implementation on Android Q Beta 3. I'll be curious to see if this ends up being the way that it goes, but as you can see, it's a lot more squishy down there. It's like a, a tiny little pill. And you go up... Up also takes you back. Well, well, it takes you back to the home screen. If I go up and pause, I end up getting my uh, my multitasking. And then in from the sides is your back button. Either way. So it's a little bit of a change. It's a little interesting. How do you feel about gesture control? Are you are you all in on gestures on your phone? I have to or? admit that I come from an uh, from an iPhone world as well. Yeah. I, I use both. Yep. And I do find the gesture controls quite intuitive. Uh, on the on, on iOS or yeah, on, on iOS, yeah, on iOS, and actually yeah, something simple like when I'm when I'm when I'm browsing the web, and I want to go back a page or forward a page, the gesture controls on iOS, they're they're a bit nicer than having to go down and press the bottom left button. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's good. I think it's good that they're getting rid of the back button. The swipe from the sides to do the back takes a little getting used to, but the more I use it when I'm not reviewing five million phones at the same time, uh, the easier it gets over time. So when you're not reviewing five million phones of, of which we will talk about uh, a little bit later, <laughs> uh, Google Maps AR was something that I thought was pretty neat. And mind you, this was not the first time we'd heard about it. We heard about it last year at I.O. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was last year at I.O. And then it took a really long time for it to hit just a few select people. And now, like I checked my phone uh, today and I have the feature in there. Um, let's see here. Satisfied with your AR experience. So let's see here. No, don't go away. There we go. So you start AR, right? If I was navigating to 
uh, a subway that uh, is apparently far away. I start AR and then eat I would fresh, go, Jason. Yes. Time to eat <laughs> fresh. Now it's not going to work because the way that it sets up, you actually have to use the pass through camera to kind of move around and for it to establish your location. It knows roughly where you're located, but when you move your phone around, I think what it's doing is it's matching some of its street view data to the buildings that surround you. Yep. And then it goes, Oh, yep. okay. Now I know where you are. And I put a link uh, to a video in the doc if you want to play that, Victor, it's, um, let's see, or maybe, uh, did I? Yeah, it's the, it's in the second column there. It's the drive.google.com link. And I went outside, and sure enough, like I was able to start the AR mode. I guess this just rolled out because I didn't have it the other day. Um, but it finds the route. You kind of move things around so that it it captures things. It took a couple of a couple of tries for me to get it. But then once it kind of popped in there, the AR mode kind of flips on and like I could imagine this being really cool in something like like uh, like in uh, goggles or glasses of some sort. This would help uh, me in New York City. Oh, like I'm sure. 100 percent. Yeah. How many it, times have I gone the wrong way? <laughs> totally. In a dense <laughs> city, this would be really helpful in the parking lot at Twit. Not so helpful, but still neat. <laughs> So I don't know. I thought that was cool. And then well, it, and also just to know like which way to orient yourself. Cause that's always, I learned it in San Francisco. There's yeah. the Hills and the water. You're either going towards the Hills or the water. But like when I'm in new places, I don't really have a landmark to connect to. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, so cool stuff there. Um, are we missing anything from, from you guys, Ron, Flo, Adrian, anything? Flo, Flo mentioned briefly the Nest stuff, but I'm not yeah. gonna. We we I feel like we talked about that leading up to it. Yeah. Um, I'm not surprised by what they did. I've heard some behind the scenes stuff that went on between Nest and Google, and I think Ron Amadeo, a friend of the show, uh, wrote an article about how Google I/O essentially killed Nest as a brand, which I I do agree with. I think it's the 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 glory days of Nest are over with that announcement. But uh, it yeah. you know it is what it is. I understand why they did it. So yeah. How do we know we're not going into more glorified days? Ah, yeah, that, that's the half full glass is half full. <laughs> yeah, Strike I don't know. It. I'm looking into it. My my understanding is this whole shift was to try and uh, make Nest more privacy minded, which is why some things are going away. I don't know. I'm still looking into it. This is unconfirmed, but this is a lot of the conjecture that's going around. And um, I'm also just trying to figure out what the heck is going to change. I I don't know that anybody's going to notice outside of us. It's yeah. Right. That, that's so that's, a, that's a very good point. It. Very, very good point. So, yeah. Curious to see. Yeah. Except for the fact that some of the names of the products are now like five or seven words sandwiched together. Yeah, uh, but it just yeah, means a giant Google logo in the middle that. of Lowe's, which is going to push way more product than just Nest itself. So, yeah. I mean, that's what it's going to be. Just wait for the holiday onslaught. <laughs> yep. <sighs> We shall see. Uh, I think the last thing that uh, that I had on here was just this uh, whole promise of moving machine language data sets on device, mm -hmm. which is something that came up in a few different places at Google I.O. That assistant demonstration was part of that, was the reason that it was so fast is because it's no longer pinging the cloud for all of these queries. It's all stored on the device. They were able to uh, compress that data set down to small enough to fit comfortably on a device and not take up too much space. Uh, although I could see like lower end devices with, where space is, at a, you know, is a little bit harder to come by. This might not be the kind of thing that you find, for instance, on a Pixel 3a, but I bet you find this on the Pixel 4 when the 4 comes out later this year. And I think that's, I, my guess is that's the direction that Google's heading, is that it's harder to differentiate your, your hardware. Um, but if they can move this stuff on device, just think of all the privacy you know, the, 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 the privacy gains that you get out of that, the performance, the speed, and who knows what else. So I think that's pretty neat. Have we missed anything? Probably, but probably, but that's we, okay. There's so many more months ahead of us. There's uh, a lot of the stuff is going to be slowly rolled out. A lot of the stuff we're not going to see until Android Q goes officially live. Um, but I do think there's one thing that we should mention just to round off, which is that for those who aren't going to be getting an Android Q on the same due date as everybody else, they're going to miss out on some of those awesome privacy minded, oh, totally. and, you know, transparent features, which is still like this big cloud that's hanging over Google. 
Yep. Kind of like the cloud that was hanging over Google I.O. last week because actually it was kind of overcast. Yeah, a little um, overcast. For the first time since they moved it to Mountain View. So. But it was still pretty nice. It, yes, it was. I mean, I'm not complaining. <laughs> I'm it was nice to not about. have a sunburn at the end of uh, Google yes. I.O. Uh, Ron, you got an email. Or we do we, have an email. We got an email. We have an email. Collectively, I'm just going to read it. Uh, so Q, Q Davis writes in and says, so we need to discuss the nature of tech journalism. And then he wrote this in all caps, but I'm not going to shout, but just pretend I'm shouting. <laughs> Why do companies hold press events anymore? Tech journalists keep spoiling everything. Uh, he says, back in the day, as I shake my cane, it was fun looking forward to a new tech product launch. Now it seems like every other blog post or podcast has some sort of exclusive leak or stolen info. I wish we could treat these stories like movie spoilers. I want to have the wow experience like we used to have instead of the, well, that was boring because we already knew everything already experience. Anyway, just needed a rant, wanted to, to know your thoughts. Love the show, been a fan since Buzz Out Loud and then moving into the Twit Cottage days. Thanks, Q Davis, for being a longtime fan of Jason's work. Um, <laughs> I, 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 too, I, too, was a Buzz Out Loud listener. Uh, so uh, You were on Buzz Out Loud a couple of times, weren't you? I was towards yes, I was yeah, on Buzz okay. Out Loud. And that right. was like a dream come true because I will tell you that listening to to friend of the show Tom Merritt on Buzz Out Loud was what's in, it inspired me to get into podcasting. There we go. Um, nice. When I when I, when I started iFanboy, the the initial rundown for the iFanboy comic book podcast was basically the Buzz Out Loud rundown, <laughs> just instead of tech comics. And uh, I've told Tom that many times that I owe my podcasting career to him. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. then ultimately to you, Jason, because you were you came on board then. But um, neither here nor there. Um, Q Davis, you are suffering from something that I call modern culture and mainly <laughs> social media is to blame. Um, much like movie spoilers, we will never have a Luke, I'm your father moment ever, ever, ever again. Um, it is no longer what happens. It's how it happens. At least that's how I resolve it. Um, I can't think of a single thing that has happened that we didn't know was already coming in some way, shape or form. The, the wow and wonder of yesteryear when stuff was kept a secret, like the old Apple, you know, presentations and things like that. Yeah. Those days are gone with Twitter and, and Instagram and all this stuff. It's gone. Um, and there's nothing you can do about it, unfortunately. That's well, my opinion. What do you guys think? Well, <laughs> um, one one point I, I would want to make on this on this argument is the fact that I I think I believe anyways. Who knows if I'm if I'm right? But sometimes it's the companies themselves that are kind of in some ways leaking out this information, yeah. so that it will generate interest and generate press. And uh, so you know, it's it's hard to to blame the press for that because if you get some information. Uh, well, they're the, taking the bait. They're taking the they're bait. They're taking the bait. Tango. Sure. Hey, we need the ad dollars, okay? Anything to Everybody's get those taking eyes the bait. And everybody's the participating. Um, but I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this, Adrian. When when mm -hmm. when you've spent all this time creating some hardware and then some random post on social media blows a secret. I, I mean, I don't even know if this has happened with the uh, with the Pro One uh, at this point because this is your first phone. It but is, yes, uh, I don't know. What, like, how how would that feel from your perspective? I, I don't want to. I don't, wanna, I don't wanna reveal too many secrets from the manufacturers. Do not and, reveal and, and, and any secrets. Many, you don't feel we, comfortable we had with. A, a couple of photos um, anonymously leak before mm -hmm. our our reveal in February. Mm -hmm. um, they weren't all accidental. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you 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 want to tease. You want to sure. tease, and actually, I think it's in everyone's interest because uh, I think, like Ron said, the days of just a big bang revealing something that nobody nobody knew that doesn't really work anymore. Yeah, you know, you're not going to come there and go, "Oh wow, I was absolutely amazed by this." I think the way in which you get people in excited is you give them some little snippets. Mm -hmm. You know, other manufacturers do this, whether it's just showing a silhouette of something. Mm -hmm. Right, whether it's just you know teasing with mm -hmm. like you know a, a side of an image, a side, right. a side image. I, I I saw a squirkle button. I saw a squirkle button. <laughs> what does that mean? And then they spend the next week th talking you know, with each other and repeating the brand name and all this, trying to figure out what the squirkle button means. Exactly, exactly. If if we had the budget for it, we would announce just an audio file of the snap, the click, you know, the screen <laughs> yes. opening, closing, that <laughs> right. kind of thing. <laughs> kind of sound like a switchblade, like. Oh yeah, that's the one. That's nice. <laughs> uh, okay, well, th well, there you go. So I, I think probably a lot of the times it is it is an intentional leak, and yeah, I think that the name of the game it seems like is stay in the mind of consumers for as long as possible. And how do you do that? Little drip drip leaks of uh, features here and there over time. 
So. I mean, actually, OnePlus is a really good example of this. That's exactly what they do. That is their promotional playbook. They don't really keep surprises. They don't tell you everything. But I feel like every week leading up to one of their releases, they're throwing out something extra. And what does that do? Everybody writes about it and everybody reads about it. Yeah, yeah. I think OnePlus do a great job like this because they also get their community involved. Yeah. Every 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 phone they develop, the enhancements they, they bring, come out with, they always say it's part of community feedback. And mm -hmm. I think well, the way they release information, I think it just... It's part of that as well. Yeah. They say, right, guys, you know, we listen to you. This is what we're doing next. We listen to you. This is what we're doing next. I think it's a great approach. Mm -hmm. Agreed. All right, let's let's uh, let's take a break, and then we'll talk about your approach uh, with the FX Tech Pro 1. We're going to do that right after we thank this sponsor. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by LegalZoom. Uh, running a small business is a lot of work. It takes time. It takes money. And you want all the time and money you have to actually go towards growing your business. But, you know, then legal hurdles pop up along the way and you don't really know what to do or where to find help. Well, LegalZoom is there to help. Nearly 2 million Americans have used LegalZoom to start their businesses with LLCs, incorporation, and more. Even after your business is all set up, you may think the hard work is done, but LegalZoom can still help you out. Things like lease agreements, uh, changing tax laws, contract reviews, all those things and a whole lot more are all part of running your own business. And these are precisely the kinds of hurdles that cost a lot of money and that can take time away from growing your business. So that's why LegalZoom created their business legal plan. So you can get advice for running your business from vetted independent attorneys and tax professionals available in all 50 states. The best part is you're not going to get charged by the hour since LegalZoom is not a law firm. LegalZoom is great for businesses. It's also great for personal uh, personal reasons. I used LegalZoom years ago to put together uh, our will and uh, when we had our first daughter, and it was just really easy. And we have this really nicely uh, packaged, you know, preserved uh, pa a booklet, basically full of all the documents that we need. Uh, that came from that. It was a really easy experience and we were really happy with it. Make your time and money work for you. Check out LegalZoom's business legal plan at LegalZoom.com now and you'll get special savings when you enter AAA at checkout. That's LegalZoom.com and enter AAA for special savings. LegalZoom, where life meets legal. And we thank LegalZoom for their support of All About Android. All right, so FX Tech Pro 1. I will I will go ahead and say my very first Android phone was a Motorola Droid. And so when Droid. I when I see photos of the FX uh, Tech Pro 1 which I've got right here, I mean, I get all the fills because this just reminds me <laughs> this takes me back to a time. And actually, it probably takes like I imagine you you probably have a history with phones like this prior to the Droid, right? Because there were phones there prior were. to Android that that there did were. this. Yep. Uh, it's kind of a labor of love. What phones uh, inspired you to create this? I think one of the biggest inspirations for us comes from the Nokia E90. It was it wasn't mm. on mass release. It was uh, mostly for developers, but that was a really great phone. If it had Android, I think it would be perfect. But this for us was a, a really solid phone, and the hinge mechanism on that particular phone is one that we've tried to. Um, replicate here because we felt it was really, really good. Some of the HTC sliding phones, the hinges, they didn't last so long. Um, and when we came about designing this phone, we said, well, which which design, which hinge mechanism from previous incarnations of this form factor work well? And um, we settled on uh, the one from the Nokia E90. So, I mean, you've, you play with it for a bit, right? You can oh, feel yeah. it's pretty solid. It's super solid. It's got a nice, like, uh, quick snap to it when you flip it open, which, I mean, when you're doing a, a phone that has this sort of mechanism, you want that snap, that kind of, like, click. Mm -hmm. It's so right into place. It yeah. just, I don't know, it feels like a switchblade almost. <laughs> 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 don't we all want a switchblade? No, uh, no, we don't. It's but it's nice a when a phone blade. can do that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's not nearly as scary as a switchblade, but it feels really nice when it flicks out. And the the keys have a really nice tactile um, feel to them as well. Those They've look got nice and big, unlike the the other phone with a keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> what is the other phone with a keyboard? Um, I believe it's named after some fruit fruit that grows like a weed in your backyard. Mm. Um, I can't remember. Blackberries grow like a weed. Do they flip <laughs> out like this, though? 
Do, do, no, but they do really have any, that, that, that and they have that? thorns on them too. By the way, just to oh. just to add to this metaphor. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> no one wants a blackberry then. Um, one thing I like about the layout is that you've got all the letters kind of positioned almost dead center, right? I feel like some of these keyboard layouts. They get kind of creative with where they put these things, and you end up kind of off center with your, yeah. We we put a lot thumbs. of thought, we put a lot of thought into the design of the keyboard. So there are sixty four keys. We made sure that the letters were mostly in the center, so that there's less travel for your thumbs to do. Yep. Uh, we wanted to add some of the really important keys that you'll get in a landscape device. So the cursor keys, for example, really great. You can you know we have cursor keys. The uh, the, the phones that Flo referred to don't have cursor keys. At uh, the top row there, you'll see it's slightly short. The keys are slightly shorter than the rest of the rows. And right. that's because when you press them, you don't want your fingers keep always tapping the screen. Um, so we've, we've gone through some iterations about the keyboard, the designs, the touch and feel of the buttons as well. You know, th this, you know, the early prototypes, the keys didn't feel like this. They weren't as, they didn't have the same tacticity that these ones have. And we're really pleased with how these have now. I think you can get to the point where with a bit of learning and a bit of muscle memory, you can do... Um, you can do blind typing. Mm, yeah. Like T9 oh, so cool. of the days past. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely definitely take a little bit of training, I, I would imagine. Um, but but yeah, you type on this long enough with those thumbs, they'll probably know exactly where to land. I mean, the clear benefit for this seems to be that the QWERTY keyboard is um, landscape versus portrait. Right. Because that gives your thumbs more room to move. And I think that's one of the things that makes it hard for me is if I don't have a lot of area to move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Flo. It's, it's actually for us the combination of having the QWERTY keyboard and also it then means you have a full size screen, right? You, you get that full real estate and you get a keyboard at the same time. So it was important for us to make sure that we designed a really good landscape experience with a QWERTY keyboard. So you'll see in there, you know, we've we've optimized the launcher to have, you know, a certain number of icons Ooh. in there. I know it's yeah, dense. Look at that. Look at that. It's like boom. And that's 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 It's uh, dense, but not like it's like it's a different density than the current app drawer, which is very kind of spread out. It takes you right. a while to scroll through. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we we recognize that when people use this phone, they can use it as an as a portrait Android phone like every other phone out there, and it works great as that. You know, like this, it's perfectly good phone. But when you put it into landscape and you want to use the keyboard, you, you then need to make sure that you optimize it. And you know, in doing in doing the keys, in doing the launcher, adding stereo speakers, you know, I think it's, it's great as a landscape phone. Stereo um, speakers. So I see one right at the bottom. Oh, I'm so yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Base. So they're down at the base, like underneath, right here. Or where where where, side, where am I missing it? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. All right. I was I was a little lost there. There we go. Yeah. So there's one of the speakers on the side, and there's uh, the other one right there. So you can watch it like a little lap, like a little lappy tap. <laughs> you can. You can. I, I have to admit, I was I was um, I was watching a Twitch show on the plane on the way here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I was. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay, so landscape, almost landscape first, because, you know, I imagine you envision people using the phone a lot more in this environment. That's probably one of the reasons why they're buying it. What, uh, what kind of thought goes into, like, creating a phone that is landscape first? Because we're so used to portrait, right? Like, uh, are apps, for the most part, going to operate in this mode uh, versus portrait, like there, there can sometimes be weird issues, you know, they, 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 they can, when you're they locked can. into one. Yeah. A, lo a lot of the, a lot of apps do work fairly well in landscape web browsing. We all know works quite well. Mm -hmm. Email. It depends which client you use. So, you know, the stock Google uh, Gmail app works really well. Um, some of the others, not so great. We've developed our own, um, our own landscape email app because we wanted to give users, I think a really good experience. Um, where you can actually browse through your mails, you can have previews with them on the side, um, and uh, you know there are other apps out there that, that, are, that you know spreadsheet apps. You know all all the Google Docs, Google spreadsheets, they all work really well in landscape. And when you can use those along with the keys, you actually get a really nice productivity experience. Very nice. Now, Ron so it sounds like oh sorry, it sounds oh. like apps that are that are optimized for like I'm thinking desktop Chrome OS. 
or just for tablets from my perspective. or something maybe. Yeah, because then I, I find that those are the apps that translate much easily for those of us productive types who are trying to get a bunch of stuff done. And so sure. I imagine this would be like a little little Chrome machine. Because what is Chrome really? But, but just a browser. Um, Ron, you, you are the king of, of devices that look anything but normal, you know, compared to what we're used to, which is like a black slab, a thin black slab of some sort. What do you think? What's your thoughts? I love it. I, I've, I've been dreaming of a, of a phone with a slide out keyboard since I moved on from my old HTC windows PC, uh, window, uh, uh, uh you know, windows phone to Android. Um, I think that the, you're right. It snaps like a, a switchblade. I'm very intrigued by this because I, the physical keyboard was something that I loved. The idea you mentioned earlier, Adrian, the idea of having a cursor and being able to move around versus, you know, have it, you know, I can't tell you the, the number of times I'm using apps. I'm trying to precisely get to a letter to do copy and paste or something like that this is exactly that exactly helps for it the physical keyboard does have a place with devices and it's neat to see it actually get you know kind of merged back into the android experience so i'm, I'm very intrigued by this yeah cool. thank you now uh one question i do have uh as far as the internals it has a snapdragon a35 which at this point is a little well it's it's not it's not an a55 which is the current right so it's a yep. little bit further behind what uh what kind of longevity uh does a device get starting at this point at this at this time like do you have a certain uh, approach for support or you, like what are your thoughts there i think so for us we've spoken to the manufacturer we we considered this long and hard when choosing the cpu we'll have a good number of years longevity in there we'll support we're only out with pi we'll have support for q mm -hmm. um, and who knows beyond there what's going to happen mm -hmm. Um, the 835, the, the choice behind it was largely down to the fact that we are a new brand and a startup. And to get an 845 at the time we started designing this was uh, quite a challenging thing to do. Uh, unless you're one of the you know, quite more, well, more established players, to have, to have access to the 845 and the 855s was um, not something within our reach. But then it meant that we could produce a device that actually had other, other things that people wanted to see inside. We had a nice AMOLED display. Yeah, it's we've really got, nice display. We've got uh, a Sony IMX363 lens as a camera. There's there's dual SIM inside. We've got six gig of RAM, 128 storage. So, you know, we wanted to create a premium device, one that was um, up there in terms of its quality and how you use it. And, you know, I think when you come on to like the, the Pixel 3a review later, you'll, I think the reality is you don't always need that top spec processor truth to have a good phone for your daily use absolutely absolutely true uh and this actually came out of a moto mod if i remember correctly did, right did what what's the story correct, there how, how did this come to be from from that to this yeah so um one of my partners dian cheng he created a keyboard moto mod two years ago he launched in ces 2018 and was actually one of the only people to actually create uh uh, a device or uh, an accessory that was going to sell. Uh, last year, uh, around around 12, more than 12 months ago, the support with Lenovo and with Motorola was not as strong as he expected. And the reality was, the vision was always a smartphone with a keyboard, right? You know, we all used to use smartphones with keyboards and it, very quickly we decided, right, let, let's, let's go for it. Let's create a smartphone with a keyboard. Let's bring something back that we love. Let's create a great device that we want to use every single day. Uh, and we're really pleased. We're pleased with the output. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Uh, it feels really nice too. It's got some nice rounding uh, on the edges, so com it's comfortable when you when you've got it in the hands. And uh, yeah, good stuff. So uh, is this is not out yet? This is uh, sometime this summer, is that right? Like, what what are the details as far as like price available? Yeah, what are the launch sort of plans? Yeah, so um, it's available to pre-order on our okay. website. The price is six four nine US dollars, and we're looking to ship in July. So we're not far oh, off. Not far off at all. Awesome. Um, well, this is really neat. I really appreciate you bringing this on. I I didn't mention that there is a fingerprint sensor right in the side there, and this is a hardware camera button, right? Yes, two stage camera button. Two stage. Awesome. That's really cool. Uh, I hope we get a chance to like take this through, uh, you know, take it for like a longer spin uh, when it finally gets its release. We'd love to do a review on the network. Of yeah, the, I'll be more than happy. That I, will, would be I, will, amazing. I will bring some back. That would be awesome. I'll grow out my nails. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do. We'll have Flo do the nail tests. 
Yes. The typing with nails test, which I can't really participate in. Nope. Uh, <laughs> so FX tech, that's FX dot com slash pro. And then the number one, uh, if you want to check it out and I imagine that's where people can go to pre-order. Correct. Yes. Right on. Cool. Very okay. cool. I love, I love that on the website, pure Android experience. That's just, that's the selling point. Well done. Pure Android. <laughs> I have one quick question. What's up? Shoot. Does, because it has a keyboard, does the phone do any of the like um, control commands? Because I noticed there are like little lightning bolts on the keys. Oh, yeah. I'm assuming those like are like and stuff. control uh, keys or shift keys, maybe? The, 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 the yellow arrow keys are for um, all the punctuations and um, all the other. You know, to get to the secondary um, characters, uh, there are shortcut keys available through the desktop um, as such. See, I, yep. I just held down a key long enough and it said assign keyboard shortcut. Do you mm. want to assign shortcut for G key? And then if you, if I was to assign that and then go into my daily operation and hold down G, it would do whatever I assigned it yes. to do. Yes. Um, in, in Google Docs, for example, in Google, in Google Sheets, you can control C, control V. Oh, I see the control there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what I thought was a lightning bolt is really the F. Oh yeah, that takes you home. Ah, well, okay. If I don't have that window open, but if I was in there, boop, that takes me home. I know this is old school, but I still appreciate the control plus because <laughs> <laughs> that's some things just still I'm work familiar. better, right? Some things do still just work better than what we have at the yeah. moment. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Very cool. Very nice feeling keyboard too. That because on a device like this, that that can make or break it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That that keyboard, you're going to be using it so much, and I mean, definitely devices like this, they're not. It's not like total wide mainstream device, right? Like it's definitely a, a niche device. There's a certain audience that that wants this. They're very passionate about it, but they're not. But they're only going to use it if the keyboard is actually pretty decent. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. For us, getting the keyboard. Absolutely spot on. Getting it to the level that we're happy with was really important. So we've gone through a number of iterations. You'll actually see it on our website there. The keys are different on that keyboard to what we have um, today. Um, we're updating those photos, um, <laughs> but it just—it's it's just part of our our iteration, iterative process for design. Yeah. Right? You know that that wasn't good enough for us. We we didn't want to release it with those keys. Yeah. So we went back and we said, right, let's do it again. Let's change it. Let's let's uh, let's improve it. Let's make it feel like it should feel. Awesome. Well, whatever changes you've made, uh, really good because it does feel, it feels solid. Like the, the keys are great. They, they rise up enough. Like sometimes they're just so shallow. It's hard to even find them. Feels thank really you. good. Thank so, you. Uh, cool. Well, thank you. And you're going to stick around for, uh, everything else that we have to talk about. But first, Ron, you've got the ad. <clears throat> yes, I do. And this episode of All About Android is brought to you by our friends at IT Pro TV. Uh, and listen, experienced IT professionals who deliver comprehensive training at the click of your mouse. That's the folks at IT Pro TV. Spring is here, and there has never been a better time than now to take advantage of their lowest prices ever. You can purchase a standard membership, which is video only, for $28.50 per month. You can upgrade to a premium membership that gets you videos and labs and practice tests for just $42 a month. We all know what 40 to 42 means. It's the meaning of everything. So sign up for a premium membership. Uh, but wait, you can save even more. IT Pro TV is still honoring our special offer, and that's 30% off for Twit listeners. So that drops the standard membership to only $19.95 per month or $199 per year, and the premium to $29.50 a month or $295 a year. Totally more afford affordable. Uh, that's less than a dollar a day for premium membership, and you probably spend more on that for your daily coffee or tea or other drink or beverage of your choice. And instead, instead of spending that dollar on coffee, you can stream IT Pro TV's courses live and on demand worldwide. It works on all your devices, Chromecast, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, if you have an Apple TV, a PC, or their Android app. And they've got new content as, that's added daily, so your training is always aligned with the latest certifications and the most current exams. Their episodes go from studio to web in 24 hours, and IT Pro TV is CompTIA's official video training partner. They've got 12 CompTIA on-demand courses, CompTIA A+, uh, Network+, Plus, and Security+, Plus certs. Uh, and if you work in IT, you know what all that means. You know how important it is. So IT Pro TV is your place to go get that. Uh, so visit go.itpro.tv slash all about 
Android and use code AA30 to get started with your standard or premium membership today. And don't let another season pass you by without earning your IT certifications. That's go.itpro.tv slash allaboutandroid and use code AA30 for additional 30% off the lifetime of your active subscription. IT Pro TV, flexible training, binge-worthy content, life-changing results. Thanks, IT Pro TV, for being awesome and giving such great savings. Thank you, IT Pro TV. Yeah. All right. We have more hardware. We don't need to do a bumper because... Yeah, let's bump it. Oh, okay. Well, sure then. We'll do a bumper. Why the heck not? Let's get all chill in here. Okay. Uh, I've got in my hands the OnePlus 7 Pro. Ooh. This... So OnePlus had the, uh, their announcement this morning, and you know, sure enough, you know, I've had this phone for the last couple of weeks. I've been using it, trying my best not to talk about it because uh, I got to say it's a really nice phone. This was the silent, uh, the the silent attendee of Google I/O. It really was. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's what everybody was buzzing about kind of under their breath. Like, Hey, do you have your review unit in? It's really awesome. But we can't talk about it, but I'm going to pull it out and make, you know, take pictures and hope that I'm not like breaking any rules by doing that anyways. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the OnePlus 7 Pro, just to rattle off a few quick specs here, 6.6 inch, 6.67 uh, 6 inch screen, uh, 3120 by 1440 pixels, that's 516 pixels per inch, really sharp. I mean, this display is off the charts awesome. They call it a fluid AMOLED, that's because it has a 90 hertz refresh rate. It's not 90 hertz all the time. 90 hertz kicks in in certain uh, situations, but it can ramp down, uh, I think it's to 60 hertz. When it's not at 90, save a battery, that sort of stuff. Uh, but the phone is just like redonkulous fast. It's got a Snapdragon 855 in here. Uh, 6, 8, or 12 gigs of RAM. This device has 12 gigs of RAM in it. <laughs> Didn't know that you needed Dang. 12 gigs until suddenly you had it. And I still don't know if you need it, but anyways. You could like power the mainframe with it's, that. It's kind of crazy when you really think about it. Totally. That's like Die Hard 5, 4? <laughs> Die Hard 4 type stuff. <laughs> uh, did they have 12 gigs of RAM in Die Hard 4? No, but they had a Nokia <laughs> oh. phone that took down like the entire U.S. government or something like that. Basically, if I recall the same correctly, thing. 128 gigs of storage or 256 gigs of storage. Not only that, it's UFS 3.0 storage. And uh, I pointed it out in my review. You can find my full review of this on uh, Hands On Tech. It posted this morning, but I pointed out that uh, the Galaxy Fold was supposed to be the first phone to uh, to release with UFS 3.0 storage, which is mm -hmm. like a, like a tons more faster, uh, more faster, tons faster than the previous version of UFS. And uh, we all know, you know, what happened with the Galaxy Fold. It's not out yet. And so OnePlus ends up with a big kind of bonus feather in its cap. It ends up getting to be the first uh, device to release with this faster bonus storage. Bonus feather. A bonus feather, you know, to, to add to its other feathers. Uh, 4,000 milliamp hour battery. The battery life on this was excellent uh, in my time with it. Uh, fast charge, no wireless charging though, no water proofing of, of any sort. So you want to be careful. Don't drop this in the beach. But uh, it's a really beautiful phone. And you can see three rear, fa rear facing cameras. There's a 48 megapixel main, eight megapixel telephoto with a three times optical zoom and 16 megapixel wide angle. And then... I can't show it off without going. Oh yeah, there you go. Pop out selfie cam, <laughs> sixteen megapixels. Love it, love it. <laughs> we got some goofy stuff on ah. this phone. Yep, there it is. Just it's just staring at you. Uh, love it. Yeah, so it's a really great phone. I gotta say, like I, I literally spent almost two weeks with this uh, can, device can, before review. Can we get a closer look at that pop out camera? Just like. Just, um, just the camera, like the mechanism. You can turn off the screen. I just want to see the camera. It, well, I can't turn off the screen. Oh, oh if you turn off the screen, away. will it close the camera? Yeah, well, I imagine so. Yeah. Oop. See? Oh, well. See? Well, I just want to, like, 3D visualize it. Um, yeah, there might be. Oh, there you, there go. you go. We'll refer to my <laughs> hands-on tech review of the OnePlus <laughs> uh, 7 Pro. 
Uh, this phone is more expensive than OnePlus phones usually are. <laughs> this is seven hundred dollars, six ninety nine ninety nine. I know it'll just keep staring at you. Uh, you can buy it direct or at T-Mobile. Have you had a chance with this phone? Have you seen it at all? I have seen it. Yeah, I've what do you think? First. I, I'm very impressed. It's a very nice phone. Um, I think OnePlus have done a great job. It's a huge improvement over the 6 and the 6T. Mm -hmm. um, but they've also become what they were set out to, to, to kill. <laughs> flagship right. killer. And they're, right. now, they're now that. Yeah, well, they're they're producing a flagship phone, and I mean, worth noting that here in the U.S., you we don't get the One Plus Seven. This is the only variant that we get is the One Plus Seven Pro. Right. So basically, here, if you want a less expensive, more traditionally priced One Plus phone, even though all of their phones get more and more expensive every single release, uh, but if you want that, you still buy the Six T. They've taken thirty dollars off the main price of that. Right. So now it's thirty dollars cheaper, and the six T will still be available. Right. I just love the fact that it has more RAM than my laptop. Yeah, that's that <laughs> right? just kind of blows me away. Totally. I love it. I love it. This is unbelievable. Uh, yeah. Th so this version, like this, is the stacked version. This is not seven hundred dollars. I want to say this is, or sorry, this is probably like seven sixty. I can't remember exactly. I put it in the hot. Still review, less than still, a lot of other phones out there. And the, and that is the kind of the big story that a lot of reviews are saying is like when you can get this much phone for this cost, like it really makes you question why you're paying three hundred dollars more for like a Galaxy S ten or. A Pixel 3. I mean, my my opinion is that this gets a whole lot right, and they, it, OnePlus does a really great job and always has with making their devices uh, a top quality device and always somehow getting that price down from where the, the competitors are. But for me, it always comes back around to the camera, and the camera on here is probably better than most than any of the other phones, yes, but it's still not quite there you know what i mean it's still like i take some pictures and i look at it and it's easy to scrutinize versus the pictures that i get out of the pixel 3 or even some of the pictures that i got out of the s10 so uh but i, I would be willing to overlook that like if you need to save 300 dollars, it you get a lot of options like having the the wide angle back here is a really great um addition i love that that feature oh it's a great phone pretty happy with it and the display is like off like off the charts, awesome. So, how did you find the battery with the display? Because 120 hertz is eats up a lot of your juice. So, so 90 hertz, 90 hertz, it maxes out at 90 hertz, um, but it's not doing 90 hertz all the time. So it'll do 90 hertz in certain in certain modes. Like if you're gaming, okay. you can you can turn on um, you can activate that. So it's not just constantly stuck in 90 hertz battery wise i got great battery life out of it i have to say and then they have their own uh warp charger is what they call it. it's their own flavor of fast charging and i think they said from a drained battery you can charge up to 50 percent in like 20 or 30 20 minutes maybe something like that so kind of crazy fast so yeah there's a lot to like here and I think all the reviews are kind of saying similar things. Like this is a really, some, some reviews I even saw were saying like, this is one of, if not the phone to beat for 2019 right now. And I feel like that's maybe a stretch, but uh, it is. I don't nice know. We're halfway through the year. And yeah. the, the big phone that was supposed to be the big phone this year. Um, flopped <laughs> or broke. Folded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so that's the OnePlus 7 Pro. Uh, but like I said, that was not yep. their only phone, Ron. No, they also released the OnePlus 7. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, it's sim it's got a similar build as the 6T, uh, but with many uh, internal upgrades. Uh, it's a 6.41-inch uh, 2340 by 1080 AMOLED display with a teardrop notch, the good old teardrop, got, uh, not forgotten. Uh, Snapdragon uh -huh. 855 with 6 or 8 gig of RAM and 128 uh, gig or 256 gig of storage. Um, it's just speedier now with the US UFS 3.0 storage on board like the 7 Pro has, so it did get that from the 7 Pro. Um, it's got dual rear-facing cameras, 48 megapixel with OIS and 5 megapixel depth center. Um, it's got a 3,700 milliamp battery. Uh, 
uh, Inscrete fingerprint sensor like the OnePlus uh, 6T and face detection. Uh, and, it's, and it's running Android. It's Android Pie running Oxygen OS. Um, and it's going to sell for about 499 to 549 euros, uh, available for June in the United Kingdom. Uh, and in the U.S., the OnePlus will continue selling the 8 gig 6T for $549, which is $30 less than before. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and hey, I'm I'm still. I was just uh, talking to somebody today because they were uh, they they have a Pixel Three and they were asking to look at my One Plus Six T. We we're comparing the two, and I was like, they're asking if I would rather have the Pixel Three or the One Plus Six T. And while I haven't had the Pixel as a daily driver, the Six T continues to just take amazing pictures, be a great phone. And actually, remember last time I said I dropped it and I cracked the thing? Well, I went out and mm-hmm. got the case, and I'm actually using a case for the first time ever, and it's not the end of the world. Bravo, so, uh, Ron. Yeah. You've so leveled up. I do love the OnePlus 6T. So yeah. uh, so there you go. So you can't get the OnePlus 7 in the U.S., but you can get the 6T in the U.S. for a little cheaper, and yeah. I say it's worth it. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so OnePlus did a good job of, of uh, kind of controlling the – the, the release of this, right? Like seeding yeah. out the devices, making sure the reviews all posted at once. Cause today, man, OnePlus was, was everywhere. Yeah, they were absolutely yeah. everywhere. Uh, you couldn't, you couldn't escape it online. It's, <laughs> it's worse than a spoiler from Game of Thrones. Or Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't escape it. <laughs> and surprisingly not a sexist. So, yeah. uh, which is new. <laughs> well, you know, they've this learned, they've learned a thing or two over the years. They really have. <laughs> all right, Flo, you got the next one. Uh, just as my cat starts blaring in the background, um, she's aging. Just forgive her. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. It's okay. Uh, so another one of the little pieces of hardware, well, the phones that came out last week were ones that Jason and I both have in our hand. Um, so I have the Pixel 3a right here with a case on it. Um, it's the purplish version, but the case that I have is gray with an orange button. Jason, you have the 3A XL, which is the the larger version. (laughs) Now, the difference between these two is the phone that I have is a 5.6 inch screen. And the phone that Jason has is a six inch screen. Both have Dragon Trail glass. Uh, The 3A, which is the one that I have in my hand, is a 3000 milliamp battery. The one Jason has is a 3700, so significantly more milliampage there. Um, There is four gigs of memory in both of these phones, as well as 64 gigs of storage. And they both run on a Qualcomm Snapdragon 670 processor. That's a two gigahertz processor plus a 1.7 gigahertz Adreno 615 graphics uh, processor. So that's, if you want to figure out what the hardware is for playing games, you would effectively Google Adreno 615. Um, The rear camera on both of these things are 12.2 megapixel with optical and electronic image stabilization along with an F over 1.8 aperture. Um, It's worth noting these phones do not have the Pixel Core uh, processor processing architecture to do all the fanciness of the regular Pixel 3. However, it's still pretty darn capable Uh, compared to your regular old mid-range phone. Uh, The front camera is an 8 megapixel uh, with an F over 2.0 aperture and an 84 degree field of view. So you're still going to get some of that wide angle ability that you do on like the Pixel 3. And again, I I am very pleased with the Pixel 3a as far as mid-range phones go i mean you can't even tell this thing is mid-range by the way it takes pictures no the pictures are really great out of here and they i mean it it might not have the pixel um core processor on the inside suddenly i'm I'm blanking and thinking that pixel core it's the pixel visual core visual core thank you pixel core is the company that we shared offices with uh, at the other studio uh pixel (laughs) visual core might not be on the inside here but they did say that it does all the same process like they were able to do uh software modifications so that you're basically getting this the same output more or less uh, between between the two phones it's like the purplish color. It's just <laughs> ish. Yeah. Like maybe maybe it's me trying to look for a differentiation, and I'm definitely working on kind of like doing side by side comparisons uh, between yeah. the Pixel Three and the Three A. But I feel like I can tell when I'm zooming in, or when I'm doing a portrait shot, or when it's a night shot that like there's just something missing. It's just not quite quite as perfect. 
it's just, it's just it, you can tell it's just not exactly apples to apples. It's definitely apples to oranges. Okay. Both a fruit. Hmm. Both very different types of fruit. Yeah. Um, I, I will say in my time using the 3A, like I have, you know, I, both, I have both phones in the XL version. I have both phones in the fabric case. And like my SIM right now is in the 3A because I'm working on my review for hands-on tech uh, that should be on hot by the end of the week. And, you know, so of course I'm carrying this around with me, the 3A around with me. But I, in most cases, I kind of wouldn't know. I wouldn't know the difference. It's so mm -hmm. similar in so many ways. Like, sure, if I look hard enough, I'll notice that there's no notch over here. But, I mean, even with my my background, you can't even tell that there's a notch on the, the 3XL. Well, um, I will say the onboarding process was a little, like, I could tell it was a different processor on the inside. Like, there are some... There's some situations where you're like, oh, that's right. This yep. is a mid-range phone. Yep. And also when you hold it, it feels a lot lighter than the Pixel 3. It does. The Pixel yeah. 3 has a density to it that um, the 3A doesn't really have. Yep. But if you touch the phone, like if you touch it naked, um, you can't even tell that it's not the same kind of ceramic-y back. Yep. Um, that it's, you can't really tell that it's plastic. No, you really can't. Cool phone, though. Um, did you have a chance to uh, check out the 3A at all? This, this I have not seen. No, I've not checked it out. So I'll pop it out on here. On spec-wise, it's impressive. You want to see that purplish color on the back. Oh. It definitely... Look at that. I love seeing these colors coming into the general fold of tech. It's kind, yeah. of, it's kind of a lilac. Yeah, it's super lilac. Yes, a lot like of people it's, say it's yeah. lilac. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it just kind of feels like the color balance is off <laughs> in, yeah. in the I, camera I, I that love, is our I love, eyes. I love the color pop, the fluorescent yep. yellow. That's yep. really good. Um, as Andy and Notco put it, it looks like the printer ink or the printer toner ran out of ink. <laughs> that was like the purple that came out. Yeah, that kind of makes sense, actually. Um yeah, I I think Google is definitely onto something. I'll be curious to um, see how this does sales wise. It's in more carrier stores here in the U.S., so that's good. Uh, good for Google, anyways. It, the price is compelling. Um, I don't know. It's it's four hundred starting. Four hundred starting, and I, I know you're going to see deals. You're going to see deals that drive that down even further. Mm -hmm. Um, it's kind of hard to say if someone needs to upgrade their phone right now, it's kind of hard to say, oh, get the three XL. Like the three A is probably going to satisfy many of those people and it's half the cost. I think a lot of people don't realize that they can spend half the cost on their phones and mm -hmm. still get the same performance. Yeah. You don't need a flagship. Yeah. That's the reality. You don't need a flagship. Some people just have it in their mind that like, I've got to have the latest and greatest. And the <laughs> but they biggest. are cool though. But they are cool. And, and, the th and the thing is, is that like, I've been, I've been, you know, moaning for years that I wanted Google to do a mid range phone and a flow. I think you, you touched on it. If you, if you take a mid range phone and put a good enough camera in it, people won't notice it's not a flagship. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Right. Cause Especially like usually the same like if, version of Android. Yeah. If you look at, if you look at the earmarks of a flagship is usually like amazing camera performance, you know, huge storage and or battery life, um, as well as, you know, fast processor and all that sort of stuff. And I think that, you know, I, I think of all the perce perceptions that can happen, the camera is the one that sells the flagship the most. And you put a flagship level camera in a mid range phone, people won't notice it's not, it's not, the processor isn't as fast or you don't have as much memory. You don't, ha don't have as much battery life or that it's plastic versus ceramic. And that's, sort of thing so good on google for figuring this out i hope this uh swings the pendulum of the pixel sales story uh away from the negative one that we've been hearing the past few weeks yeah can yeah. i give yeah. a piece of behind the scenes info on this uh reel that's showing right now on screen which is a uh, b-roll that jason took at google io yes um, they were kicking us out of the press room and Jason was just like I refused through, to leave. Taking B-roll. I think I was one of the last people in there actually. I was like, nope, I'm not leaving I, until I get this B-roll done. I had ditched you. I was like, he'll make it out when he makes it out. Like Godspeed. <laughs> I yeah, I, I didn't realize what time it was and I needed to get this done so that we could get it posted. So I'm exactly. happy. I was well done. To. Well done. I was able to. Uh, we have a related email. Susie from Phoenix writes in to say, I ordered the new Pixel 3a XL purplish. Good job, Susie. 
Uh, it should be here Thursday the 9th. I was checking out some of the features, especially the spam screening feature. That alone is enough for me to buy the phone. But I've never seen you or heard you talk about the AR Core features. Possibly I missed it. Can you show the features that this AR Core does, like the Playmoji and the other things it can do? I know how the lens features work. Okay, Playmoji is really straightforward. Um, if you, yes, it does things like this. I took this last night. Oh. I turn off the sound so you can't hear, but my husband, we were, we were talking to the family on speakerphone and I was just playing with Mr. Mime. <laughs> um, nice. And this is with the Pixel 3. And I have to say it's a smooth experience dragging the AR, you know, onto the uh, viewfinder and kind of taking the video. It's very, it's very smooth. This is on the um, 3A I, you said or the 3? Yeah, the okay, 3A. 3A. This is what I did with the 3A yeah, yeah, last that's night. great. So if I, oh, and you did this one as well? No. Oh, this, oh Victor did this one. Victor did this one. <laughs> nice. On the 2XL. Okay. So that's the 2XL. I have the camera app on the 3A open uh, and I can show you kind of how it goes real quick here, Susie. Yeah. It's really straightforward. You go into this little more area and you will find playground. Playground. Go ahead and tap that. And it'll load up. It might take a second or two. We'll go into here, and we can find little play emojis. We uh, got to download some first. Oh, recent. Here, we'll go ahead and do the, the hamburger. hamburger. I can move it around. I can make it, it can bigger. bigger. And then it kind of stays in place, right? That's cool. Well, it reacts to your face if you have your face in the viewfinder, which um, I find to be very fun. And those who follow me on Instagram also find that I do that a lot. Um, you know. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Flipping a burger. It flipped itself. Upside down. Now I'm hungry. Yeah, uh, And me then you too. can add, you know, words <laughs> like annotation, <laughs> type something, and you can place it over, and you could type something in there. So, yeah, there you go. There's These are really movie. quite fun, by the way. Just anybody who has the feature, who has a pixel, uh, they're really fun. They're a really fun way to keep kids distracted for a while. They're a fun way to pass the time. Ah, uh, I never thought about showing this to my kids, and I'm a horrible father, apparently, because that's a really good a idea. They probably father. really like that. <laughs> no, you're not a horrible father. These, these are the kinds of things that kids love. Uh, okay. We are going to take a break. Then we're going to jump in the arena and show off a few apps. That's where we are at. But before we do that... Mm -hmm. Let's take a break and thank ExpressVPN, the sponsor of this episode of All About Android. Admit it, you probably think that cybercrime is something that happens to someone else. Never happens to you, right? Uh, you might think that no one actually wants your data or that hackers can't grab your passwords or your credit card details, but you would be wrong. Stealing data from unsuspecting people on public Wi-Fi especially is one of the simplest and cheapest ways for hackers to make money. When you leave your internet con uh, connection un unencrypted, you might as well be writing your passwords and credit card numbers on a huge billboard for the rest of the world to see because there's some people out there that know how to see that billboard. That's why I use ExpressVPN to protect myself in situations like that. ExpressVPN secures and anonymizes your internet browsing by encrypting your data and hiding your public IP address. ExpressVPN has easy to use apps. They run seamlessly in the background and they run on your computer, your phone, or your tablet. All across the board, you can find the app that works for whatever device you're using. Turning on ExpressVPN protection only takes a single click. It's just one button pop and it's on. Using ExpressVPN, you can safely surf on public Wi-Fi without being snooped on or having your personal data stolen. For less than $7 a month, you can get the same ExpressVPN protection that I actually have and use. ExpressVPN is rated the number one VPN service by Tech Radar. Comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So you can protect your online activity today and find out how you can get three extra months free with a one-year package at expressvpn.com slash allaboutandroid. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S vpn.com slash all about Android and you'll get three extra months free with a one year package. Visit expressvpn.com slash all about Android and you can learn more and we thank ExpressVPN for their support of this show. And now it's time for the arena. So many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Android Arena. This is where it gets good, ladies and gentlemen. This is where the battle begins and it's been two weeks since our last battle so i've kind of lost track but i didn't 
Uh, good. Ron did not <laughs> lose track. Two weeks ago, you voted on your favorite app, and Vuforia Chalk was the winner. Was that yours, Ron? It was. That was it yours. Was. Congratulations. That was, that was the very similar to the, uh, well, not similar to Playmoji, but the AR experience. Remember? Right. I could yeah, you could draw on the mm -hmm. phone I was looking at. Yep. Yeah, That's so. amazing. All right. Good, good work, and you needed that. Uh, second place, WhatsApp, 18.72%. That was Team Guest. Third place, Daywise. That was my app, 15.76%. And fourth place, Reigns, Game of Thrones. The timely pick just didn't didn't quite it's because the writing get there. is so bad. Nobody. Oh, I see. <laughs> so Everybody's funny. taking out their their frustrations on your game. Uh, you know, I. It's fair. It's fair. All right. All right. Fair enough. Uh, so, do we have uh, the scores at this point? We do, thanks to Wade County in the chat room. Thank you, Wade County. Um, indeed. Uh, so, Jason, you mentioned I needed that win. I certainly did. I'm still in last place, though, with 36 points, but I'm only one point behind you in third place oh, with 37 <laughs> points. Um, guests are in second place with 48 points, and Flo, you're 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 sitting you're sitting pretty in first place with 55 points. So, but you know, 55 points isn't that far away from 36. Anything can change in a month. Anything can happen. <laughs> yeah, it's just all across the board. Uh, uh, I We're not competitive I, at all here. Yeah, I didn't. Adrian, I didn't so. <laughs> forewarn you about this, and I apologize. But um, yeah, there's a little pressure coming into the arena. The stakes are high in this one. Yeah, I love competition. I'm going to re represent the guests. All right, all right, good, good. Uh, there's a legacy. There's a guest legacy on this show. It's at not. This point. It's not it just is. guests. Who is it? It's. It's Team GG and G. Is that it? GG and G. Whatever. G -G -G. Goats, Goats. Gina and guests. Gina and guests. <laughs> Which is such a random hodgepodge of G's. But anyways, uh, okay, Flo, you are up first since you are the returning not winner. All righty. So I've just been looking for apps in the Play Store that do things that I already have apps that do things. <laughs> Say <laughs> so that again. For, <laughs> let me start that over. I'm looking for apps to, to kind of help uh, do, I'm looking for other apps. <laughs> like replacement apps for apps you already have? Yes, that's what oh, I meant. To okay, say. all right, all right. I just wanted to make sure that I'm was still fine. recuperating from last week. Yeah, it was a long and week. so this week, one of the things that caught my eye was AI Cut. Um, you know, honestly, the name that caught my eye is it has AI in it. So I was like, oh, AI, okay, let's see what this can do. And uh, I'm actually quite pleased with the performance of this app. So uh, basically, you take a picture or you grab something from your camera roll. And this app will edit your photo like any other. It'll do all of the filters. It'll do all of the adjustments that you want it to do. But the, an extra nice bit of this is that it will use AI to adjust the picture for you. So Jason, you would basically uh, press on any of the filters that you see down there. And it. so what it's doing right now and this is the kicker, this is why I particularly like it, is that it highlighted you as an object, and so now it's only editing you. Oh, I see. Now I'm doing the so background. So you're editing your part, and then when you're ready, you can edit the whole picture when you're done using it as an object. Um, I think it was the other button that you pressed because you turned yourself into an object. Well, I so I'm the foreground object. Yes. I, I feel like such an object in this app. Uh, and then this is the background. <laughs> that will give detected. you a different set of filters. And one of the nice things about this, and so we've had a lot of different phones on this show, and we've seen that a lot of these phones don't all do portrait mode the same. Well, the nice thing about this app is that it makes the portrait look just like the one on the Pixel, which is the one that I like. And you can go in and adjust uh, different parts of the photo. So if you want to add maybe more contrast to the back or you want to lighten it, or maybe you want to lighten your face and and do a couple of adjustments there because you're just feeling like the lighting wasn't good. Um, there are 30 different filters and edit functions that you can choose from. And again, the nice thing is you can just tap on through and see what the AI is going to do for you. And then when you're done with the picture, you can share it. And if you choose to share it to something like Instagram, it will take care of the tagging for you. So we'll use that AI, it'll figure out what it is, it's on screen, and then it'll suggest tags for you. And I know that sounds like maybe to our uh, to our viewers and our listeners, why would I want that? But 
you know, folks, this is the Instagram, uh, this is the Instagram generation. And sometimes you just want to tag a post and have it maybe go a little viral. Who knows? Um, it's kind of nice to have something do it for you. And the nice thing about this is it's free. So all of these features you're getting for free. And um, it's just, you know, it's a nice little, there you go. Those are the apps. Nice little, uh, you can select which tags you want and uh, which ones you don't want when you share. Personal trainer. And I've also, just so you can <laughs> see a final product, um, Victor, if you wouldn't mind, I've included a photo of my, of the kitty that was yowling in the background earlier. Um, oh. She, this is just her yesterday and I made it into a little portrait. So I blur out the background and I increase the contrast on her and it looks pretty good actually uh, when you just have it big like that expanded. So I'm, you know what, I'm glad to find an app that can do some editing and that can kind of do it quickly. And Smartly. I think this will be a fun app to keep around. Nice. It is AI cut AI photo editor. Good pick. AI is everywhere, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the buzzy word of 2019. Oh, speaking of AI, actually, and totally related with what you just showed off. Um, do you remember last year, Google I.O.? They showed off, I think it was in the keynote, the black and white, the old black and white photo, yes. that auto awesome uh, process that colorized it. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't have that feature yet, but Google apparently is now on the record to say it's like close to beta and will be coming soon. That not be fence removal. No, it's not. They gave up on fence removal, if I'm not mistaken. Wait, or, really? Or that's what they told. Is that on that, the record? I believe so. I believe they said that it just, yeah, I could be wrong. I don't know. You should investigate that. You're the journalist. I know. I should. I should do my job that I went to college for. Yes. You're, you're the real journalist here. <laughs> Apparently. Uh, and we appreciate it, Flo. We appreciate you. I try. Uh, okay. So mine will be kind of quick. I was like, man, I'm having a hard time coming up with something. And then I remembered I have the Shield TV at home. And I, on YouTube, there's a guy called ETA Prime. He's big in the emulation community. He's, he does a lot of videos on how to get the most out of your emulators and emulators on different game emulators on different systems or whatever. I saw a video of his that said that the Shield TV is a really great system for emulating the Nintendo 64, which is interesting to me because the Nintendo 64 is a really tricky system to emulate. You get mixed results unless you're on like a computer or a laptop or whatever. If you try and do that with a Raspberry Pi, you're going to have horrible results on almost 100% of the games. So I installed the app, the open source app called Mupin 64 Plus FZ. It's a Nintendo 64 emulator. And I I have it here on, on the phone, but it's really not that impressive or, or interesting to look at. I don't have any games or anything loaded in here, but you kind of get a sense of, of the customizing uh, customizability that you can get to here. Uh, but this is free. It's fully open source. You can fully con uh, customize all controllers, up to four controllers onto a single device. And they have different kind of profiles in here to match the different types of, of controllers that you might have and want to use. Uh, you can do different profiles, which is important because different games have different limitations when you're doing emulation of this type. And so you might have a game that that emulates perfectly when you're in the accurate, you know, Glide 64 profile. It might not work that well on another game. So you would go in here and you could, on a per game basis, select different emulation profiles and find the right one for it. Um, what else? Save states automatically within game. So when you exit a game, it automatically saves your position in that game, whether it had a save state option or not. And uh, and a whole lot more, you know, display tweaks depending on the screen that you're using. If you want it to default to a different resolution, you might be able to impre uh, improve your performance that way. Uh, a number of different things. But ultimately, there, I'm bringing it in here, not necessarily because I've tested it on the phone, because I have not, but because using this app on the shield tv i was able to play super mario 64 just as my like basic yeah and i'd say skip about halfway through this video and you'll get to it um get to kind of some of the games running on here but it i mean it works really well using the shield tv like the emulation that you get out of uh, the 64 games the few that i've tried was 
way better than anything I ever got on the Raspberry Pi, which, yes, I realize the Raspberry Pi is pretty low powered, uh, but uh, it's it's worth knowing about. It's a, it's a good emulator. It is open source, completely free, and uh, you should check it out. It might, I, I think you can find it right in the Play Store um, on the on um, Android TV, if I'm not mistaken. If not, you might not have to download it and sideload it, but I think think if i remember correctly i just got to it straight through the play store and it's really nice too because it has a nice kind of gallery if you have a couple of games in there everything looks really nice it imports into the android tv uh main screen as far as like your recently played games they just appear in that main screen so it's really cool mupin 64 plus fz and if you're interested in setting something like this up i highly recommend checking out eta prime on youtube uh, he does some really great videos on this topic and uh, can really kind of demystify some of the stuff. Because as you can see, it can kind of get a little a little in the weeds sometimes. There's there's a touchscreen support, so you can have the buttons overlay on the screen when you're playing a game. A lot of cool stuff. Mupin 64 plus FZ. Jason, question. Yeah. Does it support hardware keyboard buttons? Uh, yeah. hard, that, that is a good question. Let's see here. Uh, I would have you know what I would honestly I, I would I would guess yes because when I've plugged it into the shield TV I know that you can control the game with a plugged in keyboard through the shield TV right I'm guessing they would use kind of the same approach but that's I mean that's a really great use case right like having a hardware keyboard like you have on the pro one for emulation that's that's awesome you want that hard that we, we've, had, we, we've, we've had good success uh, <laughs> trying them we, out. We, we've done that, Jason. <laughs> so <laughs> Not this one. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a great use case. And I remember actually with the droid trying to, trying to set that up, although the droid keys were so flat, like they were just like paper flat. So it was really hard to get any sort of tactile. We, we're going to start having a Mario Kart competition in our office. Ah. See, you, th you, you demonstrate that and then the, the niche market becomes a little wider because then the emulation set is like, oh, now I now I, that's why I have to have that phone. Uh, so, Adrian, why don't you show off your app? I should preface that we, we have a tool, right? And uh, we, we check the tool to see whether apps have been done or not. This did not appear in the tool. However, we realized that this app actually entered in the arena apparently before the tool was created. So this was, what was, what was it, seven, eight years ago? It was, oh, it was, uh, I think seven years ago. It was in the 60s, so sub 100. Yeah, so um, this was a long time ago. It was episode, seven years ago, episode 67. And, uh, and, and so Ron and I were talking, we were like, man, but so do we, do we have a clause for like game, the games or apps did, that have been check. around? Yeah, I did that, check. No, and you totally checked. I was like, God, I feel bad taking it away. But then I was like, you know what? If an app can survive for seven years and still seven years later have someone willing to champion it, it's obviously a really good app. So yeah. you are welcome it. to show off this app. I, I, I almost guarantee it's changed somewhat over seven years, right? It's not the same app it was it, it seven has, years ago. It has. So great. It, it qualifies. Has. What? Okay. Uh, show off your app and tell right. us a little so, bit about uh, it. The app I've chosen is called Zombie Run. It actually started as a Kickstarter project many years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and I first came, came across it when my wife started, started wanting to go out and do some running. So this is a cross between a game and an exercise app. And the idea is... You take it out with you when you go on your run, you put your headphones on, you listen to your music, but actually you're also on a mission. You're one of a few survivors who are in a zombie world and you're there trying to get to outposts. You're trying to run, you're trying to pick up supplies, you're trying to deliver it to supplies, and at the same time there are zombies coming after you. Um, and it's great, you know, when you, when you try it out, you kind of think to yourself, what's it going to be like? And the, the feeling when you have your headphones in and zombies are chasing you, it gets you to run a little, little bit more. So you can use it when you're walking, when you're jogging, when you're running. And I think the idea is if you want something different to do when you're running, right? Running is a boring thing to do when you go out there. It's, and sometimes you need a motivation to do. Mm -hmm. And this combines... Uh, being able to go out and play a game and actually do a bit of exercise at the same time. Can I show it off while you're talking? Yeah. I'll show it off on the screen here. Please do. Here we go. I've got it on my screen if you want to show it. Yeah, please do. So uh, the, the game has evolved quite a lot since it first started. There's now, I think if you get the paid version, there's hundreds of missions available. It's... Um, a 300 plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. 
Yeah, and there's a whole community of people out there. You can build up your base. You know, you can make sure that you've got a nice lots of supplies out there. Um, it's it's really fun. I definitely recommend anyone who's lacking a little bit of motivation to go out and go for some exercise or go for a run. Give this a go. Try it out. It's it's free. You can get a free version, or you can you know if you become a if you like it so much, you can pay for it and get, get the extra missions. You might as well be a little scared of zombies while you're while you're exercising. We've, I mean, all, we've all watched we've all watched the zombie programs. We all watched The Walking Dead, and <laughs> you don't need to imagine too hard. Yes, indeed. We've all been there. <laughs> I do imagine I need to be in shape for any sort of disaster that might happen that I need to run from. So it's definitely motivation. <laughs> <laughs> all right, this is Zombies Run. And awesome. I love that it made its way back because definitely, I guarantee you, it did not look this polished when it came into the arena seven years ago. The design paradigm of uh, of apps seven years ago, very different from where we are right Makes now. Mix your music yep. and our story. Oh, my. I wonder what that would be like with dance music. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, there are there are uh, upbeat zombie movies also. There's there's zombie movies of all types. There's even kids' zombies m movies now. And I'm serious. There are. It was on the Disney Channel. It's called Zombies. <laughs> um, of course. Yes. It's like a high school, it's like a I kid's saw, high I school the, movie, but saw, with zombies. I saw, the two, I saw the two stars of that at Disney World doing, uh, like doing promo stuff. <laughs> Like they were, they were doing interviews on the platform by the by the railroad at Disney World when when that show came out. Oh boy, so, those yeah. zombies they smile a lot. They're, they're a different type of zombie. A different. They're undead. Yeah. They never die. Ish. <laughs> All right, Ron, I've got your app installed. What you got? Yes. Yeah, so, so my app is called uh, Do It Later Text Message Automation. And um, we've seen apps like this in the past before that lets you automate sending text messages. But what I found interesting by Do It Later was that actually I found this when answering a question for a friend of mine who's a teacher who's saying, man, I wish I just had a way to um, send a message to all of my students at once on a regular basis, like don't forget to do this or whatever. And so I was stumbling on it. I found Do It Later, which allows you to, if you go hit the plus button there on, on the bottom, Hit OK, actually. You got to yeah, do permissions. Yeah, I got to allow so, things go. that might show things that I don't want it to okay, show. So okay, back, we're good. Hit, we're hit good. Back. We're good. Yeah, hit, hit, hit back. Hit back. There you go. Hitting um, back. Okay, so when you hit the plus action button, um, you can choose to schedule either the middle button, which is a text message, or an email, or if you go down, you can uh, schedule a Twitter post. Oh. Or you can schedule a reminder for yourself, or even a phone call, which I th which I find just find fascinating. Um, Does it just start uh, dialing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but what this is great is basically allows you to to write a, write a message and uh, select a group of recipients and ha schedule it to be sent at a certain time. So, like Jason, if you wanted to text me and Flo every Tuesday at nine a.m. saying, "Hey, don't forget to pick you know put your arena your arena app in the dock," um, you could schedule that. You just you would type in our name. In, in your contact database, hit the you know hit the um uh you know, write type your message as you're doing there. You choose when you want it to send. You can choose in 15 minutes, in an hour, in three hours, or you can set a custom time and date for it to send. You can set it to repeat. Um, if you scroll down from there, um, you can you can choose you know do it weekly, do it daily, do it hourly. Um, this could be actually nefarious if you wanted to really bother somebody, but I don't, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not suggesting you do that. Um, and then, uh, and then it'll, it will just do it, which is great. Um, so the SMS sending isn't something that we ever, you know, is, isn't that unheard of. It was the, uh, email and the Twitter stuff, which I thought was interesting, um, because it basically gives you that same kind of scheduling capability, but with your email or with your Twitter account, of course, you got to authorize both, yeah. you know, both accounts, you need to sync it and it basically acts as a Twitter client or it acts as an email client and you could type your message, you could schedule it. So if you're the kind of person who's, oh, I don't know, an, you know, an influencer who wants to make sure that you're posting your links to your content or doing something, you could use this to schedule all your content. You can schedule out in a week. Nobody will notice. It looks like you're tweeting live. Um, if you are, you know, the use case of like a teacher or a soccer coach or some sort of, you know, like community group type thing and you want to do a mass message that's on a regularly scheduled thing, you could use this for email if you have the whole list of folks and you can send it to them and, and uh, go away. Jason just discovered one of the added features I wanted to show off is the fact that it has a dark mode. 
which we all know is the sign of a good app now. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So when you go into the settings, you can choose dark mode. You can also specify your your date and time format and what the first day of the week is and whether you play a sound when stuff is completed or not. Um, really, really cool. Um, the free version is free. There are some ads. Um, and if you, Jason, if you go back to the main screen and hit the little uh, metal, uh, did you buy it already? Or did yeah, you get the I already bought it. Oh, you bought it. Okay. Yep. Well, um, when for two ninety nine, you can upgrade to the pro version, and that gets rid of the ads. It gives you unlimited SMS uh, recipients, unlimited email attachments. You can back up and restore all of your data, um, and then of course support your devs. So uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So do it later. Schedule SMS, email, Twitter, uh, anything, anything else that you might need. You can schedule it and automate it uh, so that you can send your messages out. Uh, so you don't have to do it live. You can schedule them for another later uh, later time and day. So do it later. Text message automation free in the Google Play Store. Right on. Love it. Yep. Do it later. Free just do it later. Or, yeah, just don't do it now. Why would you yeah. do it now when you could do it later? Just do it later. Seriously. Yep. Yeah. All right. Vote for your favorite app this week. Is it AI Cut, Mupin 64 Plus FZ, uh, Zombies Run, or Do It Later? Go to twit.to slash AAA poll 420. Twit.to slash AAA poll 420 and place your vote like Victor is about to do. Who will he make happy? Oh, oh wow. It looks like Flo AI got the vote with AI Cut. Oh, he didn't choose it though. He didn't click it. Oh, it didn't oh, count. It might change. Oh, no, no. He, oh, okay. All right, fine. Uh, so far, <laughs> Do It Later has one registered vote. AI Cut, we know, uh, has one registered vote. But this changes. We're going to have hundreds of votes by the time next year, next week's uh, episode happens. And we'll see <laughs> who is the big winner of the week. Uh, I think we've done it. We've reached the end of this episode, and it was a lot of yeah. fun. Uh, Adrian, thank you so much for flying all the way here just for this show, only to get back right back onto an airplane and go back because this is the one thing that you had to do this entire trip. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate thank it. We are honored. Me. It's been great. Thank you, guys. <laughs> uh, Adrian, of course, you're the co-founder of FX Tech, and you've got a really exciting couple of months uh, upcoming you know, to look forward to leading up to the, the official release of the device. Is there anything you want to leave people with? Uh, we can't wait to get it out. We're working really hard to make sure that the device is ready for you guys, and we're really excited. You know, every time we, every every person we show it to, we get the same reaction, and we can't wait to get it out. Right on. So yeah, bear with us, and we'll get it to you guys. <laughs> FX Tech. That's FXTEC dot com. If you want to go to the site and do a pre order on the Pro One, you can do that. Uh, really cool piece of hardware, and uh, can't wait to give it more of a more of a spin once once we're closer to Thank the, you. the release. And I'll everything. bring one to you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I would love to review it. Um, Flo, what's new in your world? Or what's not new in your world? What's in your world? I'm just, I'm just still recovering from Google I.O. pretty much um, and trying to catch up on everything that I missed last week. Yeah. So that's where I'm currently at. But of course, if you'd like to follow me and you want to know maybe why I picked the app I brought into the arena tonight, you can go to florenceion.com. That's the Flow feed where you can find all of the stuff that I'm writing about and doing. I'm still working on my Google I.O. recap, uh, but that will go up this week and we'll possibly have some Pixel 3a, Pixel 3 comparison shots for you this week. So there's a lot to do. And of course, the OnePlus just got announced. So that's like another thing. And oh my gosh. Oof. It never ends, but It's does good. It? It's good. And then if you want to keep up with what I'm doing, you can go to Twitter and then you can look for the link to my Discord and come hang out in there because that's where all the talking happens. That's where all the fun happens. Yes. Thank you, we Flo. Have some fun in there. Had fun Thank hanging you. out with you at IO. <laughs> it was it was great. It was fun. But we missed you, Ron. We would have been I even missed you funner guys too. with you there. I know. It would have been nice. But while you guys were off and having fun in Google I.O., I took some time off, relaxed, hung out with the family, celebrated, spent my birthday with the with the new kiddos. And, Happy uh, birthday. Yeah, and it was very nice when it was was that family this weekend for Mother's Day. And it was just it was a lovely weekend. It's a lovely life. Um, go follow me at Twitter, on Twitter at RonXO and on Instagram at RonXO, where I post little snapshots of that wonderful life. Um, and I don't know, now, you know, we're about five months, almost five months into having having little ones in our household and we're getting, they're going to bed earlier and Finale Podcast might be making a comeback this summer, oh. right as, 
right as the TV season is finishing, we're going to dive back in with some more finale episodes. So stay tuned to finalepodcast.com for more. So wait, I, yeah. Okay. I just realized as you were saying that you're five months, your, your little babies are around five <laughs> months old. They're, yeah, I'm telling they're, you, this is, this is when things change. This is when like you, you rub the crust out of your eyes and you go, Whoa, this is what normal <laughs> life feels like. I've yep. waited so long. It, We're getting they they were both down and asleep by yeah. eight o'clock the other night. We're like, oh hey, we can have dinner at a normal time. Wow. Isn't that awesome? Like I just yeah. got goosebumps, dude. Yeah, you got a lot to look forward to. It's pretty good, but they're getting they're also getting very cute these days. So I'll send you guys. Some <laughs> oh yes, they are. So, Please yeah. do. So. My favorite thing to do is to because you're on East Coast to check you on Instagram for <laughs> six in the morning, oh. and then I wake up to those beautiful babies. There you go. <laughs> I'm so happy for you guys. Congratulations once again. Five months yeah. later. Uh, we, uh, you can find me here at Twitch, of course, twitch.tv slash all about Android, but also Tech News Weekly. Um, I'm doing reviews on hands on tech, twitch.tv slash HOT. If you want to find me just in general at Jason Howell on Twitter, reminder or just a little, uh, little word real quick here. We have a survey for you that focuses on how you use collaborative software uh, at work and specifically. It's brief. It takes about six minutes. It does not collect any personal data. If you want to help us out with that, go to twit.to slash survey14. We would appreciate it. Uh, do, do us a favor if you have the time. Twit.to slash survey14. That is it for this week's show. Leave us a voicemail at 347-SHOW-AAA. Send us emails at AAA at twit.tv. Find us on Twitter uh, individually and also our show Twitter handle, which is at Android Show. Our arena apps list can be found at twit.to slash uh, Android apps. You can find our show notes and our past episodes and subscribe links, basically everything you need to know about this show at twit.tv slash AAA for all about Android. Uh, that's that's your place to go. We even have new little fancy buttons down there that, that aren't just, you know, you know, in, hidden in the menu. They're, they're actual graphics that you can go, oh, yeah, that's the Pocket Ooh, Cast look logo. at that. Actionable, actionable buttons. That's right. It. Buttons that take you to places. It's it's the uh, it's 2019, people. Uh, <laughs> you can also watch our show live if you like. Tickets at twit.tv. Uh, come see us in the studio. We record every Tuesday starting at 5 p.m. Pacific. Uh, and, yeah, or you can just catch it live at twit.tv slash live on the web. That's it for this week. We'll see you all next week on another episode of All About Android. Bye, everybody. Bye.